if you're somebody that is thinking about getting an arowana, uh, this is, it has to be one of the more popular aquarium fish, uh, home aquarium fish. And I think it's also should be at the top of the list of fish that is abused. And it is a, it's on our 10 things episode. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one reason and one reason only why this fish is abused. And it has nothing to do with water parameters. It has nothing to do with diet. It has everything to do with the size of aquarium that they're in. Um, that is the biggest mistake. And it has to be the most common mistake that people make with arowanas. They, they, they have this idea that fish only grow to the size of the tank. They have this idea that it's going to stop growing at a certain point and it's going to be okay. And it's not. This is a death sentence for these fish. So if you are even contemplating getting an arowana, have the right tank before you even do it. Yeah. What is the right size tank? If you don't have at least six feet, don't even let the, uh, the idea enter your mind. And I'm going to be honest, I don't like an arowana in a six foot tank. I've done it. I've done it multiple times. I personally don't like it. But one of the things that I have right now at 45 years old, I just turned 45, is patience. I have more patience now than I've ever had in my entire life. I need to have patience being with that woman every single day. So you have a fly on your head. I, you're doing that on purpose. <laughs> don't say what you said about me. It would be very easy <laughs> because we own three six-foot tanks. We've got this one and we've got two 125s. I could have bought arowanas a year ago and been raising them up ever since and then graduating them up into the eight-foot tank. The reason why I say don't do that is because things happen. Things happen, you have no control over it. Maybe you, when you're, when you're planning on getting your eight foot tank, maybe your water heater breaks and you can't afford the tank anymore or you have to move or you lose your job or you break your leg or you never know what it is and the one that ends up suffering for that is the fish. So my personal advice to anyone that is considering buying an arowana, do not do it unless you already have the tank that it's gonna grow up in and be able to live a full life in the whole time, which is why I'm waiting until I get my eight footer to get these arowanas. There are people that would argue even an eight foot tank is not big enough. I disagree that my personal opinion is I disagree. I think an eight foot tank should be pretty much like the minimum for an arowana, yeah. silver arowanas. Asians know and, and Jardinis know because neither one of those get as big as silver arowanas. These are fish that are known in the wild to, to approach four feet in length. I've never seen one that big. I've seen them in public aquariums that are in multi thousand gallon aquariums and they're only like maybe 36 inches. So that's as big as I've ever seen. The biggest one I've ever seen was about 36 inches. What are you laughing at? <laughs> the chat. <laughs> What's going awesome. on with this? What is I, it? There's some, just some awesome people in here. They're making fun of me, aren't they? They just think I need to get you for back talking and stuff. <laughs> she will. So, um, so yes, me as the YouTuber trying to give you the most sound advice possible. Don't buy one unless don't buy one with a plan to upgrade the tank. Just yeah. wait until you have the tank. It might not happen. You so. never know what's going to happen. Arowanas, in my experience, and in Lisa's experience, are easy to keep from a water parameter, from a diet, from a, uh, you know, I mean, as long as it gets along with the other fish in the tank. The biggest problem with arowanas is not water parameters. Oh, my pH was too high. That's why my arowana died. No. They're absolutely one of the hardiest fish I've ever kept. They're very similar to your larger South American cichlids that are just very hardy. Um, Arowanas are the same way. They're not a sensitive fish. Not good for the beginner because the beginner is not going to have a big enough tank. But they are, they are an easy fish to keep as long as you can keep them in the tank. And make sure that if you do put fish in the tank with them, they can't fit in their mouth. Because it's going in if they can. I did lose an angel once. Yep, she did. Again, told her not to do it. She did it anyway. Guess what happened? That's true. Uh, It's definitely true. 
So the hardest part about keeping arowanas, and believe me, I can attest to this multiple times, is not keeping them. It's keeping them in the tank. They are jumpers. Their, their nickname is water monkeys. Yep. The reason why they have that nickname is because in the wild, they will vault themselves out of the water and snipe insects off of branches. There's videos on YouTube of them doing it. There's like BBC documentaries and stuff like that. I don't know if it's BBC. It might be Nature Channel or whatever, but Natural Geographic. They're on there. They're not hard to find. These fish are jumpers. If you don't have a large enough tank for them, and if you don't have secure lids for them, they're gone. Trust me on this. I've had it happen multiple times. The fish that we've been talking about this whole time, we had Sully and Pip. Sully was my guy that I had for years. Uh, he was massive. He's in a couple, my second and third video that I ever did on this channel. Go watch that. You'll see him in there. Both of them you'll see in there. He jumped out of the tank Father's Day. Found I him mean, hard as a brick. That was a dumb move on his part. That I was mean, your fish. He had it made in there. <laughs> Pip died like two weeks later. Uh, and we never figured out what it was. We say it was a broken heart. Because she just croaked. There was no choking was on so anything. Sad. There was no suffering. It was just one minute she's alive, next minute not alive anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like those stories you hear of the old people that are married for 54 years and husband dies and the wife dies three days later. I mean, it, that's what we attributed it to. It was, was so sad. Like I that. had a beautiful funeral for her and everything just because she was, she became like family. They really do. The, the big fish have more of a feeling of a pet. Like Oscar did. Oscars, oh, the, the larger Central and South American cichlids, uh, monster fish, but just because they're so big. Um, I mean, my arowana was bigger than my chihuahuas. <laughs> I mean, he was probably right. capable of eating one of my chihuahuas. Um, so keeping them in the tank is the most difficult part. I want to talk to you for a second about the most ridiculous story I've ever heard about an arowana, and I don't think I've ever even shared this with you, but you'll get a kick out of it. I was in a fish store. I'm not gonna say which one it was. It is still in business, and I'm surprised that it's still in business. But anyway, there was a guy that worked at this store who I liked a lot. I thought he was a really cool guy. Uh, he was also bald. Maybe there was a connection there, I don't know. But he was a cool guy, always gave really good advice, and I, I had seen him work with a lot of other customers too, and he was just awesome. I mean, a lot of people loved him, very respected guy in the, in the fish keeping world. So I was in there one day and I don't remember what I was in there for, but we got to talking about arowanas. And I was telling him, or I think I might've been telling him, I just got an eight foot tank for my arowanas and I'm super excited. In fact, I know it's coming to me now. That is what I said to him. And he said, oh, that's a mistake. And I said, wait, I, I bought him an eight foot tank. That's a good thing. He said, nope, that's a huge mistake. And I said, well, explain yourself. And he says, the problem with arowanas is that they jump out of the tank. I said, I know. That's why I'm getting him a big tank so he's not confined and he doesn't want to jump out. He said, nope. You're making a mistake when you put them in a big tank. Please understand, folks, I'm gonna add text when I re-upload this. This is not my advice to you, okay? I'm telling you a story that somebody told me. He said, no, this is a bad idea. Putting them in a larger tank like this is a bad idea. You need to keep them in as small a tank as possible. And I said, well, what are you talking about small tank? He said, I would not go over four feet. An arowana in a four foot tank is gonna be perfectly fine. And I said, well, what's your rationale for that? And he said, here it is. If you have a shorter tank, the arowana is not going to have the ability to build up momentum and jump out of the tank. Are the dogs outside? What do I, I hear something weird in there. Anyway, he said, Having them in the short tank, they're not going to have much opportunity to build up speed to where they can vault themselves out of the tank. And so when he told me that, I said, all right, that's fine. 
that's good. Let's talk about something else. Because I knew at that point he was not going to be able to offer me anything else about arowanas. Because that was the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard when it comes to arowanas. And here's why. You know what a snake is? I bet you do. Do you know how a snake attacks its prey? It, how many times have you seen? I know there's probably some, maybe water mo moccasins or something. There are some snakes that go really fast. But you don't see snakes chasing stuff like chasing a rabbit or chasing a mouse. No, the snake sits there and it just watches and it sees what's going on. And when that prey gets in the right spot, boom, the snake strikes its prey. Arowanas are very similar to that. They don't just sit there and watch the stuff, but what they do is they, if there's, if there's a food or another fish or something, they kind of hover, I'm sitting here acting like I'm an arowana, but they kind of hover around and they kind of sit there and boom, they hit it really fast. They do the same thing when it comes to jumping. And I, I wish I could have done it. Maybe I'll try to see if Scott will let me do it uh, when I upload this as its own video. Last week or two weeks ago, during King and Queen's uh, live stream, that happened. His arowana was just swimming along and boom, it just hit the roof, like out of nowhere. That's what these, air, these fish do. They don't build momentum. They don't get on the starting line and go, ready, set, go, and start running as fast as they can and jump out of the tank. No. The whole fish will kind of, kind of coil up, and then they just vault straight out of the tank. If you ever have seen an arowana try to get something that's on the surface, they kind of sit there and they look at it, and they're like wiggling around underneath it, and then they jump up and get it. They don't build momentum and gain speed and all of this. It doesn't exist. So in a shorter tank, they're gonna have just as much likelihood to jump out as they would in a larger tank. Anyone who gives you the advice that arowanas don't need big tanks, they are morons, don't listen to them, never take advice on arowanas from them ever again. Putting it back on two cameras, that, that was the silliest. Can you turn the AC off? I'm freezing my butt off. <laughs> Fine. So, Next thing is diet. Uh, size tank is important. Diet is important. These fish want to eat meat. Yeah. They love meat. They love protein. And they will absolutely eat fish, but we're good fish keepers, right? We're not going to feed our arowanas live feeder fish because they're gross and they're full of disease. And they don't add all that much nutrition to the fish. So instead, what we always did, I was responsible for eating, feeding the arowanas. I don't think you ever fed them. I don't know. I gave them the, uh, what do you call the sticks? What were those? Yeah, we're going to get to that. Yeah. Basically, she bought her fish and put it in my tank, and it was mine then. <laughs> That's how it all worked. But it so was still mine. <laughs> what, what I did, what I, my routine with feeding my arowanas was I fed them four things, four different things. Uh, the easiest was the carnivore sticks yeah. from Hikari. I love those. They float. They're about half inch long sticks. And you put a handful of them in there, you walk away and everything's good. Uh, and they float. So the arowanas, they're always going to be up at the top of the tank anyway. So they just go through and they just skim them and it's awesome. It's perfect. We need an arowana in this uh, room right now to take care of those flies that keep jumping on your Yeah, head. these flies are going to be scary because if they land on the glass tops of that tank, that arowana is going to try to get them. Anyway, the other thing that I would feed them uh, that is pet food store bought from a pet store, I was a huge fan, and I still am, though I haven't bought them since we lost our arowanas, of the Tetra Jumbo freeze-dried krill. Oh, yeah. Uh, these are very expensive, but like... We've bought bulk freeze-dried krill before and, and repackaged oh, yeah. it and sold it on our, uh, under our own label. Uh, we've bought freeze-dried krill from a lot of different places. Uh, Corey has freeze-dried krill. It's awesome. It's great. But I think the best one on the market is Tetra. It's that blue and red can. It is amazing. It is expensive, but it's absolutely worth it because these are like whole shrimp. Some of them still have the eyeballs on them, and they're big. They're monster they're almost like popcorn shrimp. And also, you, you pay, oh, there's Corey. You pay extra money for these shrimp, 
but you also don't get all of the little bits and the little junk floating around in your tank like you would if you bought it from us back in the day. So I love the Tetra Jumbo freeze dried krill. Expensive, I think he even but tried good. It himself, pretty no, sure. that's ridiculous. The other two things <laughs> that I did, and this is very very simple to do, it was buying from the grocery store tilapia and frozen shrimp. Uh, we here in Virginia we have food lions, and we have of course WalMarts and Giants and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we have two food lines in King George, uh, and there were there were always sales going on with uh, with these shrimp, where you buy a bag of these frozen shrimps, you give them your MVP card, and you get a free bag. So buy one, get one free. And sometimes it would be the little ones that are like popcorn shrimp, which were awesome. Those were great because if the arowanas are smaller, you just pop them in there and they eat them whole. It was right. awesome. Okay. So my routine was I would take however many of them out of the bag, put them in a cup, get tank water in the cup, and I would sit it there and let them thaw out while I go and feed all of the other fish. And then uh, I would, once they're thawed out, I would either cut them up and throw them in, or when they were big, I mean, when they were pushing 30 inches, I threw the, even the jumbo frozen shrimp in there whole, and they were just bloop, one gulp, and they're gone. Uh, it was awesome. The tilapia, uh, I would slice them and then cube them and then put servings this is so nerdy but we all do this i would put servings into sandwich bags and then freeze those and then every day pull one out and thaw it out and then once it's thawed out you've got your little cubes and you just throw them in there and they eat them and it's perfect um, the only thing that i would warn people on when it comes to feeding arowanas is they can injure themselves, and one of mine did, uh, and it was it was pretty sad actually. They've got the two. Oh yeah. What are they called? Barbels. I call them barbels, uh, but I don't think that's what they're called. But it's kind of one of those staple features of an arowana. You know these things, and uh, one of the things that you have to watch out for is if you drop food in that sinks, it's going to sink down to the bottom. If you have an abrasive substrate in there, like a sand or a, 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 a sharp gravel, if it's sitting there, the, the arowana doesn't gracefully come along and gently scoop it up off of the substrate. It, Like I showed you earlier, it's going to sit there and it's going to look at it and it's going to hover, hover over top of it and then boom, it's going to strike it and they can injure themselves on your substrate. Um, See you later, Haley. <laughs> that's, why, that's one of the reasons why we are going to have no substrate at all in our arowana tank that you will see right here someday in all of its glory. There will be no substrate at all. So, yeah, tilapia, shrimp, frozen shrimp, whole, um, the jumbo, tetra, krill, or any freeze-dried krill. Corey's got it. Order it from his. Uh, it's the, I, I think the, the krill that Corey has is the same as what I used to carry. If not, it's very similar and it's good. Just as good a quality as far as the nutrients for the fish. They're just not as perfect as the tetras. The tetras are like, it's the whole shrimp. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, those are really expensive. So I'm sure they're significantly cheaper to get the krill from Cory. And then the, uh, the cichlid sticks, the, no, the super carnivore, super floater stick, whatever. Uh, Definitely, definitely good for them. Uh, and there was a time there where that's all we fed yeah, was those sticks uh, when they were smaller. So as they get bigger, you can increase the, uh, the size of the uh, food that you're getting. And I remember the one time it was the most glorious thing ever. We were at Walmart and they had tiny, tiny shrimp. They were like smaller than popcorn shrimp. I don't even know. They're like the little itty bitty shrimps that you would find like in egg rolls. Salad, like the salad shrimp? Is they were, that what you're they about? were micro shrimp. They were so small. I don't know. Uh, we bought like four bags of those <laughs> when they were at Walmart. But, uh, but those were really good too. The frozen shrimp is what I'm talking about. That's what I fed them. Uh, I didn't make any food for them. Uh, and as far as store bought pellets or anything like that, um, it was the Hikari Super 
carnivore, carnivore floating sticks. That's what I fed them. So uh, as far as water parameters go, we've, we've never made a big deal out of water parameters when it comes to arowanas. And when I talk about parameters, I'm not talking about you're not doing your job and the nitrates are really high. I'm not talking about those parameters. I'm talking about pH, GH, KH. We've never made a huge fuss over those and we've never had a problem with our fish. And I don't know anybody really that has. Yeah. I mean, anywhere, it, it, we've had arowanas in a pH anywhere from six all the way up to eight and, it, and they were flawless. They never had a problem with really that at all. I don't think we've ever had them in a very low pH. Well, you you did your own water before oh, that's me. so that's that's why you're saying that when you lived uh in the the other house and you had to do your own water and is that what you're talking about that well that was the ro water yeah. that's what you're talking about well that's because I, I had to i didn't want to say ro water because i for some reason always say ario <laughs> just another thing for somebody to make fun of me she or... also calls the orioles the oreos Oh, the team, the Oreos, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Well, I don't like them anyway, so who cares, right? <laughs> I'm a Nats fan all the way. As long as I say Nationals right, that's all that really matters. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, I've lived in three different counties and had arowanas in all three counties. One was on a well, two were on wells. The rest were on city water. I never had to do anything to the water to get it to meet the requirements of arowanas. It was always perfectly fine yeah. right out of the tap. Um, that's not the hardest part for arowanas. Like I said, keeping the water clean is absolutely critical. You have to imagine these are big fish. Big fish eat big food. They have big poops. There's, it's absolutely essential to keep the water clean. So with tanks, with uh, an arowana tank, needs to be big filtration, needs to be clean, you need to be on a root, routine maintenance plan and never deviate from that. I mean, keep the water clean for these fish, give them a good diet like we were talking about. It's not gonna be a problem. I don't know, I don't know how much more there is to say about what arowanas. What about decorations? I mean, you don't want to have fancy decorations in the tank. You really don't need it, not for arowanas. No, you certainly don't. Nope. Uh, well, Ario Speedwagon was a good band at one time. I love Ario Speedwagon. I caught a drumstick from the drummer from Ario Speedwagon at one of their concerts. I don't know where that came from, but no, decorations, I wouldn't. An arowana is the prettiest decoration you've ever seen. Yeah, so. you don't need anything else. So. <laughs> but they. I'm just saying, somebody might decide they want to get arowana, let me get some really cute decorations, and that's just a waste of money because you don't want to worry about it. Well, and I've never... It. They're going to be up top anyways, mostly. Yeah, I've never known them to be plant killers. I've never known them to be destructive, like Oscars are. We're going to have Oscars with our arowanas, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for us... We may have one thing in the tank, which would be, where is it? A big piece of driftwood right in the center of the tank. Um, it's not gonna look big in this tank, but it's, it's actually, if you go back and watch that video of our original 240, it's the piece of wood that's in there. It's actually sitting right there. I just oh, can't yeah. get it's it. It's the one Rena likes to Yeah, let on. me go grab it. I'll go grab it. I'll put the camera on you. Oh, okay. All right, well, I see. I want to say thank you to Jessica Taylor uh, for your $2 super chat. Can't wait to see the new setup. I can't wait for us to get this setup started. Trust me, it's such a, it's a lot of work, and John's doing most of it, I have to admit, because I'm just a, a girl, and I can't pick everything up on my own. So, you know, have to have John. He's a strong man, so. <laughs> But I can fill tanks up with water, and I can take care of tanks, and I can feed fish, and I can do all that. But, yeah. So, go ahead. Show them your... Did you thank them both? Oh, there's one guy. Just... Yeah. No, no I, I hadn't got there yet. You came back, so I thought... I'd well, go, go ahead. Through. Okay. Dylan Tiford, two 99 cent super chats. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it, and thank you for supporting KG Tropicals. And hold the presses. Since you uh, 
since you don't get the notifications and I do, uh, we just had <clears throat> a patron pop through. Owen Turner joined Ooh. the free swimmer level you, of Owen Patreon. Uh, awesome. Thank I've you so much him for that. In the chat tonight. Uh, okay, so here is the piece of wood that I was talking about. It's a giant, amazing piece of driftwood. Uh, usually, I have it sitting kind of like this. Oh, that's not the one I was thinking. I thought it was the other one. Yeah. And it's, it's actually pretty cool because the arowanas will swing through it and stuff like that. It's really, really neat. Uh, it's really dirty. i got to clean it up. But this is probably going to be the only thing that will be in that tank at all. Not even any substrate. 